flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council meeting for August 5th, 2024. The order will report. Please take the roll. Dan Patterson. Here. Mike LaFave. Here. Diane Allen. Here. Olivia DeFrancesco has had another commitment. And Cal Ellis. Uh, I, I'm here, but um, Dan, if you would, I, I'd like to speak to Olivia's absence. She has sent us a message. And, and I'd like to speak to her. I, I would like. Well, I'd like us to Go ahead, Cal. Cal, Mike, Diane, and Dan. First, I want to say it is a privilege and an honor to be able to serve my community sitting alongside you. We all know Asa Davis has demoralized us and other Exeter employees with his derogatory comments and false accusations. He has affected the morale and productivity of the hard-working team at the town hall. People fear him and feel they no longer work in a safe, respectful, productive work environment. At the town council meeting on July 29, 2024, when asked to abide by the rules of procedure, Asa Davis approached the council table in an aggressive manner and spoke to the vice president of the council in an aggressive tone. I thought there was about to be a physical fight and feared for our safety. This is unacceptable and I feel a line has been crossed. I believe it is incumbent upon the president of the town council to handle this matter and put measures in place for the safety of Exeter's town council town employees and citizens. Taxpayers do not have free reign to say and do what they please in public meetings. <coughs> the town bully can't feel that he's above the rules. He was disruptive, threatening, and insisted on speaking about things that weren't relevant to the meeting. It was not normal discourse and decorum. Anyone who does this should be escorted out of the meeting. The First Amendment is not a shield for this type of behavior. I have read that other towns with similar problems designate a point person for an individual like this, so only one person deals directly with them. We as the town council need to make this happen so that people's workflow isn't interrupted anytime someone wants to come into the town hall. In today's political climate, I don't think it is at all unreasonable for me to feel unsafe and have trepidation about attending meetings going forward. The behavior of Asa Davis is having a chilling effect on and affecting the mental health of all who work for the town of Exeter. Accordingly, I will not be attending the council meeting tonight, August 5th. I look forward to hearing the council's thought about an ongoing solution. Sincerely, Olivia D. Francesco, Exeter Town Council. Dan, I apologize for taking the time, but I will tell you that I hold Olivia's uh, participation in, in this council to be exemplary and really important to us. And when I read this this afternoon, I placed a call to her immediately. She did not answer. Uh, I'm distraught by this. And, and I know you weren't present, Dan, so uh, you're not responsible for this. But I, I really felt that it needs to be said. There were people present that night, and I heard from one person who said they thought that behavior was very out of line. So that's, thank you for indulging me, Dan. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make a correction. Yep. Okay. Uh, number three, acknowledgements and announcements. A is the Rhode Island primary is Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. The voting will take place from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at St. Kateri, Takawatha Church, 84 Disney Hill Road, 80, 84 Exeter Road, Exeter Road, <coughs> and Metcalf Elementary School, 30 New Snack Hill Road, Exeter, Rhode Island. 
Voters who ordinarily vote at Exeter Chapel will vote at the Metcalf School. Unregistered voters will vote at the Exeter Clerk's Office at 75 10 Road Road Exeter from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. limited ballot. Voters who wish to care to vote early can do so at the Exeter Clerk's Office, 675 Tenrod Road, Exeter, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., beginning August 21st and ending Monday, September 9th at 4 p.m. Mail ballot applications for the Rhode Island primary are being accepted by the Board of Canvassers until 4 p.m. Tuesday, August 20th, 2024, at the Exeter Clerk's Office. The last day to register to vote in the Rhode Island primary is Sunday, August 11th. Unregistered voters can register online or visit the Exeter Clerk's Office during normal business hours. Unregistered voters who wish to register in person on Sunday, August 11th, should visit the Exeter <coughs> Animal Shelter, 169 South County Trail, Exeter, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Cal. <laughs> Be patient, man. Be patient. I, I do have what I call a public service announcement. Uh, I had a question myself, and now I've received a couple of calls from residents regarding the fire district bills. And I just thought I would share with you, since some of you are uh, sincere. I don't know. What are, you, what are you giving away tonight, man? I don't know. What, what is this? Anyway, hi. Uh, if you have any question about your fire district bill, you haven't misplaced it, it hasn't been lost in the mail, they haven't been sent, uh, I spoke to our assessor, who doesn't deal with that, it's a whole separate issue, but there apparently is an issue with the uh, bill preparation software that they're trying to address, and I understand that has been or is being I'm getting nods is from, being. from is being. Uh, so eventually you will get a bill, uh, but you didn't miss it. So I just thought you might like to know that. We can't wait. Well, I'm sure you can't wait. <laughs> um, and if I'm speaking too loudly, it's because there's a young lady here. Well, young, young is a relative term. But she's sitting here and she told me that she really can't hear well. So I'm trying to speak loudly. Thank you. So she, you're welcome. We go way back. Wait, not that far. Anyway. You good now? I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Number four, I need a motion to approve the agenda order. Wait, I'd like to, can I please make a, a, a change in the agenda order and move new business item 9G to the first new business item because um, I'm looking for a, ge oh, a gentleman in the back of the room uh, who is here to address that issue. I placed it on the agenda last month and the gentleman lives far out of town in like halfway to New York City and I said let me try to let you speak early on. So, so you want that to move 9G to the place of that? 9G. Uh, 9G to the beginning, okay. the beginning of new business. And then I would move to uh, approve the agenda as I've amended it. Okay. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Uh, communications? Cal, you got any communications? Uh, no, but I have one. Okay. Number four, please. Okay. Uh, uh, two, three. Two? Two, but two, one. Yep. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. No. Two. Number two, three. Yeah. Uh, uh, negative. Okay. Negative. Okay. Let's see. Under the minutes. Number three, you have communication number two. Under the minutes, I will have to re recuse on the number five. I was not here for the life. So and I'm sorry, man. I'm, but I would like to remove item number one. The minutes of June 3rd. I just have a quick question on those. 
if we could take them separately, please. Number one under, under what calendar? Uh, June 3rd, minutes. Okay. You want to do a separate one on that? Would you place? please? Yeah. Well, yeah, would you, would you, would you pull up, would you remove them from the consent agenda? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion to approve the consent agenda minus number one and number five in the minutes. <coughs> do, we have, do we have five already? Do we get five? Mm -hmm. five we have to get okay. okay, is there a second to the end motion? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so now you want to, you want to discuss number one first, Council? Mr. Stewart, please. That's the June 3rd agenda, and I don't usually read the comments that uh, are, are quoted here from Mr. Davis, uh, but I, I did glance through them, and I came to the last sentence, and I thought, what? That perhaps Lynn has, although Lynn, I know that you're recording and recording skills are exemplary, but that I keep writing, I read it several times, and I wondered if by chance you made a mistake, uh, because it says here a more, another morale booster besides Friday afternoons off, which doesn't happen, but there was consideration, uh, would be making Town Hall a canine-friendly workplace. And I and I, I I paused on that because I know I, I know I've been here when treats are given out in some offices to Mr. Davis's dog. I, I started upstairs once when I was here and as I started up the stairs, uh, a dog greeted me at the top of the stairs. So I didn't pers I didn't I didn't go any further. Not that I was necessarily afraid of the dog. But I assume that then uh, Asa Rabbit was upstairs, probably with Bill or with Dixie. Uh, but then, then I understand that you had asked the leash be placed on the door, but someone said that the leash is placed and then, and then it's unmanned, and the dog still proceeds to go through the building with a leash, and it's not, and it's not handled. And, and I thought, you know, <laughs> maybe it's the teacher in me, but I thought there were state regs about uh, of drugs being, uh, I would say it, under control, leashed in public buildings. Uh, and so I'm, I just, I know, Lynn, from what I told you, asked to, to be leashed. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, you and I didn't talk about it, but someone else mentioned it. Is that a mistake? That's what was said, to make it canine friendly. Okay, well, it seems to me it is. The treats are given out. All right, Lynn, thank you, Dan, that's okay, it. So we do motion to accept the minutes. And move to approve as written. June 3rd, 2024, please second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Does that include the session for June 3rd? Yes, number one. Just number one. one. Yes, yeah. only number one. Uh, number five, Town Council Special Meeting July 29th, 2024. I was not here, so somebody needs to make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the June 3rd meeting. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Number six, vacancies and appointments. <coughs> Personnel board? None. No. I received this one. Conservation Commission, we're down to only meeting one member. Well, we have six, and the current ordinance says we need seven yeah. in order for that commission to be active. Any more? Any more? Okay. Continue the budget. Anybody knows anybody? <clears throat> okay, uh, B, resignations, none. C, appointment. Exeter Rural Land Preservation Trust Committee members, two are needed to serve a four year term beginning date of appointment. I don't see any this morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, juvenile Hearing Board, alternate member to serve an unexpired term ending <laughs> November 6, 2026. Uh, no letters of interest this month. Uh, number three. Tax Board of Review alternate members to serve unexpired term ending August 2nd, 2024. Okay. okay. 
Number four, public works worker. That we're going to discuss later on. You want to do that later on the executive session? Yes, okay. Dan, thank you. Okay. Uh, number five, animal control officer. We haven't received any no. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, expiring terms, none. <coughs> On to public hearings, there are four public hearings today. The first one, <coughs> A is an outdoor entertainment license application. Karen Levine, applicant on behalf of the Friends of Exit of Animals to hold a classic car show, including vendors on Saturday, September 14th, 2024. The rain date is Sunday, September 15th, 2024. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Exeter Animal Shelter, 169 South County Trail, Exeter, Rhode Island. And a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is Karen here somewhere? Is the applicant here? No. <clears throat> well, I'm Joyce, Joyce Bash. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I have to see this for Joyce Bastion, yeah, the Valley Road. Um, we do that. We've been doing this. I think it's the 13th year. I don't know how many days. Maybe one of the spring two or just the yard sale. Just uh, the yard sale and that. But um, we've been doing this. We raise a lot of money um, for the shelter, and everybody loves it. It gets bigger and bigger every year. Um, it's been a huge success, and it's good for the town. <laughs> Any questions and people from the donate. Council? They donate no. food for the animals to come in. Go ahead, Cal. I'm ahead. sorry, but yesterday I was in the company of a friend from out of town, uh, in another town, East Greenwich, and she said, "You know, the animal shelter really needs help." And I said, "Well, help. I mean, they're doing the very best they can, and but." She said she saw a Channel 10 piece on the animal shelter needing something, and she said she came to see you, Dina, yeah. because <laughs> you're high school classmates. <laughs> uh -huh. And I said, well, and she said, you really need to, they really need help. And I said, well, they've got a fundraiser coming up, you know. So, <laughs> so it, it's your classmate, and I know her. So, yeah, she said she knew. Why don't we make sure that she knows that you're trying uh, <laughs> okay. to raise money? And everyone should know trying to, she, they're trying to raise money. <laughs> donations, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, do we have a uh, Not stop. <laughs> Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Another roll call. Make a motion. Um, Two hundred nine dollars and twenty-four cents is owed in advertising and certified mailings, and there's a hundred-dollar application fee owed. And just um, split hairs, but maybe make a correction to make this 2024 to 2023. I just grabbed them for yeah. <laughs> so my car. Right. <clears throat> so that's what's over here. Sometimes you do waive the um, filing fee. <coughs> yeah. right. The, the application fee. I'll make a motion to waive the application fee for one hundred dollars. And I'll make a motion to approve the um, application. <laughs> What that fee with? Can we close? Can we close it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to blend your motions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. You have a question there? Thank you. Yes, but just to explain. Um, other than Cal, can everybody speak louder so we can hear you? Oh, because I, I can't hear, hear anything you, but back here. Some people here. Okay, so. All right, you say others and others than you. Oh, Joyce, <laughs> Joyce, <laughs> Joyce, did you, yes. did you get two hundred and nine dollars and twenty four cents for okay. advertising and certified mail? Okay, thanks. And those those are ones we grabbed. Those are like from last year. <laughs> we do have new ones out. We have new new pamphlets out that we've been hanging around town. <laughs> 
Okay, the second public hearing is a liquor license application, class F1, special one day event. Matt Richardson, owner applicant, Tilted Barn Brewery, One Helmsley Place, Exeter, Rhode Island, plot 39, block 1, block 1A. We need a motion to open the public hearing. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Oh, that's right. This, that we also need a motion to open I'll up. I'll make this. that motion as well. Okay. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. We don't do too many of them. So. No, we don't. Okay. Is Matt here? Or? He's not. I'm here. I'm Stacy Costello. Okay. I, I saw your name. You were next. So I, Excellent. Well, come on up so everybody can hear. <laughs> Thank you. It's for, so we need a one-day liquor license at the Tilted Barn for bringing in outside vendors and breweries from other states. It's a one-day event that they do every year. This is the third year. They do donate a portion of the proceeds to local events, and last year they donated to the Exeter Volunteer Fire Department and also a local family in need that had a child that had cancer. Um, it's a great community event. It's always very tame and well put on, and it's a good positive environment for the brewery. What is the date on that? Seven. It looks like 7th. September 7th. I just got to reiterate that, Dan, so yeah, people it's know. It's not on the agenda here, but probably on the application. It's, it is yeah. on the license. Uh, and they sell about 300 tickets. Okay. Any questions from the council? No. no. Any questions from the public? $165 is full for the advertising. Sure. Thank you. But everyone knows where it is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go see those folks. Yeah. I close the public hearing as a winter dancing thing before you move on also. Right. Good yeah. uh, It's all good. Close the hearing. Close the hearing. Then we'll have to move the license thing Well, yeah, you're, you're open. You're going to keep it too far. Okay. Don't. We're going to close the public hearing. Close the public hearing. Okay. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Now we need a motion as the liquor license board. Move that the application be approved. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was the understanding that is subject to paying the advertising. Yeah. Fees being paid. Okay. We convene now a motion to close the hearing as the Exeter Liquor Licensing Board and reconvene as the Exeter Town Council. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item C of public hearings is a second hand dealer's license application. James T. Turner applicant, EW Gardner Golf, Golf Cars, LLC, 247 Moose Neck Hill Road. Exeter, Rhode Island, plot 20, block 3, block 14. We need a motion to open the public hearing. So, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is Mr. Turner here somewhere? Yeah. Oh, come on up. <laughs> Tell us what you got to do. <laughs> well, one of the, I'm trying to get a dealer's license from the Department of Motor Vehicles, <clears throat> which is required after Governor McKee signed the bill in, effective July 1st of this year, for low speed vehicles. Okay. And that's what I'm here for. Didn't need it before. <laughs> Something you already been doing, but now new law requires you to Yes. Do it. Gotcha. Just one of many. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner, how long has your business been there? I know it's been uh, yeah, probably since the uh, okay. late nineties. Late nineties. Yeah. <coughs> and we've always sold golf cars and utility vehicles. Mm -hmm. You're right across from Duncan, right? Correct. Right. Uh, and are you expanding your offerings beside? The golf carts to other well, uh, during, during COVID, I couldn't get golf carts. So the company that I was able to get product from is Bentelli, and they make low-speed vehicles. 
So I've been selling those since <coughs> 2021. Bicycle. Am I the only one that doesn't really know what you mean? Because I only drive a high speed. Those are the easy go ramps. Well, but, uh, they, but they are golf. I mean, I've had a golf cart. That's so. not what you mean, right? That's a low speed. Yeah. So, what you mean. Bicycles. Yeah. No, no, no. Golf cars. Golf cars are not low speed vehicles. Oh no, it's like like. Sorry with the fish on time. Okay. Well, not sorry, but you know what I mean. Okay. So if you lived in the in the villages in Florida, yeah. you'd buy one of these. Yeah. <laughs> and there are many, many in uh, Charlestown and uh, Bonnet Shores. Uh, they're fine. Can you put a plate on these? I'm sorry, can you put a plate on these and register them? Yes. Right, that's why the DMV requires a dealer's number that I'm trying to get. And this is just one of many things that I have to do to get the dealers. It's a golf cart. Yeah, like, well, have you been able to operate over the last 30 days since the law was implemented? It has been the dust. I'm operating, but not selling these at this point. It was an interruption. Right. I'm ready for the state to get more money. Any questions from the public? Any questions from the public on this application? I, do. So, I have one. <laughs> I do, Phil. Um, so they're requiring you to register them, or you think that's the wave of the future? No, they're, they are, but the requirement is, so everything that I sold up to June, June 30th, uh -huh. people were able to register them. No. Are they to, to, to drive on the road? Yeah. On local roads. Yeah. And what? Uh, what are you sure? Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, your name, please. Your name. Wendy Fenner Aubin, 37 West Shore. Uh, in the back. In the back. Uh, please stand up and give your name so the court can write it down. Uh, yes, Brian Sampson, Highland Court, across the street. Uh, just a quick question. Okay, and number one, I think you have a fabulous business. It's a nice business to have there. Uh, how fast do these new vehicles go? And when they say local roads, like this is not a local road. This is 102. Yeah, highway. It's a highway. <laughs> okay. So you can't, you can't do any highway driving. Uh, and it goes, uh, Bud Craddock, when he does the once a month at, uh, radio show with uh, Gene Balsinti, mm -hmm. said you have to check with every local community because they're all different. Some will allow you to cross the highway, mm -hmm. but not drive on the highway. It's so at this point, I don't think we know where we stand, it, <laughs> because it's kind of a new concept. Uh, how fast do they go? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the federal requirement is 25 miles an hour. It's top speed. Yeah. And you can only drive on roads of 35 miles an hour or less. Thank you. OK. With a license? Pardon? With a driver's license? Yes. Advertising and certified mailings, there was $132.12. Okay. Yeah. 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 Make a motion to bring James T. Turner, applicant, EW Guard for Golf Carts, LLC. James J. J. Oh, they get T. James yeah. J. Turner, applicant, EW Guard for Golf Carts, Golf Carts, LLC, a secondhand dealer's license. Thank you. 
Application Kimberly White, owner, applicant, Cozy Canine Retreat, 82 Sodom Trail, Exeter, Rhode Island, Plat 49, Block 4, Lot 37. I need a motion for the public hearing. So moved. Um, I just want to ask uh, the solicitor, uh, I have used Kim on one occasion to watch my dogs for a week. and. I don't think it's a conflict of interest, but I just wanted to check. Is it okay? Do I have to abstain, or is it okay for me to? If you to have not, if you have an ongoing business right, relationship, <coughs> it would be. But if it's not an ongoing, I could use her again. I only use her once so far. But you don't have a, you don't have a business relationship with her, or an ongoing. I do not. Okay. Can I, unless you feel that there's something that uh, impinges on your ability to be impartial. No, I just wanted to be forthcoming. That's all. Thank you. In my humble opinion, but uh, again, not the ethics group, but I, I, I don't believe it. Thank you. You're okay. Thank you. Motion to the second. Mm-hmm. All there was. Open the public hearing. Yeah, there was. Two of them. All Aye. Okay. Uh, is the applicant here? Tell us what you're doing. Uh, okay, I'm watching dogs out of my home. I've been on over for six years, and I've been doing dog sitting, and I didn't realize that I needed a special use permit, so I went in front of the zoning board two months ago and was approved. And I just wanted to do the right thing. Well, no, I think the record should indicate that you know there was a uh, what is it right here a, ru a ruling that you have a copy of that uh, gives you some I restrictions I place the restrictions on myself to ease the neighbors um, right because what we do well, your neighbor Mr. Ward mm -hmm. has written uh, to us have you spoken with the neighbors about Yes, they all came to the meeting, so we addressed all their concerns at the zoning meeting, and then I said that I'd be willing to make those concessions, and then they approved it. So I <coughs> have a license. Well, yes. well, then, I'm sorry, and again, I, 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 it's not like I like to hear myself talk, but when you speak about um, concessions, I know that was mentioned here, Mr. Ward was at one point the zoning officer, so he mentions that there, I think he does in his letter, that there really isn't a definition of kennel. So uh, when you say concessions, what, what did they well, ask they, of you? Well, Paul was concerned if I was going to get into breeding, and I said I wasn't you know, a breeder. He said, are you going to get into grooming? And I said, no, I didn't go to school, and I'm not going to go to school for a breeder. Um, he was concerned about an actual kennel, because I do this out of my home. So I said, I'm not going to put up a, a kennel. I'm, not, I'm just doing this out of my home. So we addressed all the neighbors' concerns at the zoning board. Oh, another thing was um, they didn't want the license to go with the property if I was to ever sell it. So, uh, right. so I said I would sell it as a horse farm because I have almost 17 acres and I have a, a registered horse boarding okay. facility. Okay. Well, he, and he wrote, he said he couldn't be here exactly. And, and he, we don't need to hold it up uh, because he does speak to those issues. Mm -hmm. And I think for the record, what you indicated here, sufficient for me, but I can't speak for any of the rest of the councils. So I have to speak to this. I, uh, I used Kim once, as I said, and I can say that she has a great operation. She has she dedicates the entire local level to the door, so that's an indoor spot. She has dedicated couches. She has, it's a great area downstairs. 
she does allow them upstairs as well, uh, but mostly down. There's, a, there's horses there. It's such a relaxed atmosphere. There's a run that she, she uh, fenced off, a pretty good L-shaped run uh, with a double gate so they don't escape. And I think it's a great place for the dogs. She does a good job as far as, I, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Dina came today and just did a surprise visit and said that she was going to do an inspection. And I said, come on in, come on now. And she said, I can come in now. And I said, sure, she came with another gal. And I showed her the facility and the fencing and the downstairs and the air conditioning and the heat, air conditioning. It's nice. Thank you for offering that. Dina, did you want to just say a quick word for the record? I did go. Um, out this afternoon and she's right she let us right in she has the whole back entrance to her garage into her basement which she has the three rooms all kind of open but they're all gated she has one room that has crates in it where the dogs sleep at night she can put them into crates then there's a room where if they get along together they can, it's a bigger room so she can have three or four dogs if they play and then she's got a room that's separate in case she has one that does not get along with other dogs she has a separate room you go out the door, and there's a huge fence in the area. I mean, it's, it's just huge, and it goes all the way around. And like he said, there's double gates between them, so she has to move them from one to the other. They can't escape. She, they go into the small area, then she puts them into the bigger area, so she can move them around safely. So it's the basement of what you Facility. Yeah, so it's not yeah. a kennel book because no, I, I had four dogs in my keep. I had to go for the license, and the neighbors were upset, which I totally understood. And I told everyone, I understand your concerns, and I'm willing to address any of your concerns. So I did in the zoning. That was the seven days a week, the operation? Yeah. yeah. Yep. What's the average number of dogs per day? Um, I'd say average six. And most of them are just during the day. No, they stay over. They stay overnight. So I don't do daycare, so they're not coming and going constantly. People Basically, go on vacation, they bring their dogs. Babysitting. Babysitting. Good, good, good. And I require all the inoculations. I require rabies certificates. They all have to be up to date on board teller and all the vaccines. I clean with kennel soil, which is a germicide that's not cheap. And I make sure I mop every day with that and do everything I can to prevent any Type of virus you, you've been doing this for a while. I've been doing this for uh, like seven years, and I didn't know that I no, was sorry, that's not seven, why I asked. Yeah, seven years. No, I'm not the kennel police. No, I know. I'm just trying to do the right thing. Yes. Now, is there any type, Dean, is there any type of license required by the state for this kind of operation? Only if she does breeding. Only if you do breeding. She's got to have a special license for breeders, a breeder's license. Any questions from any members of the public? No neighbors are here that want to speak to this. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> we need a motion now. We need a motion to approve. Class 2 kennel license application of Kimberly White, owner applicant, Cozy Canine Retreat, 82 Sodom Trail, exit of Island, flat 49, block 4, lot 37. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
to address an issue regarding the long-term violation of the town's own policy on noise, which is Article 2, Section 22 to 42, the noise policy, that has affected me and neighbors whose backyards abut Mail Road. For several months, we've been subject subjected to the loud noise created by large, heavy trucks traveling up and down Mail Road every weekday, often beginning before 7 a.m. and continuing until 4 to 5 p.m. In an effort to determine the reason for this heavy traffic, I went to the town hall on July 24th. Um, my inquiries at town hall led me to Hal Morgan, Exeter Zoning Inspector. He informed me that the trucks were part of a project to install a solar farm on Mail Road. He also stated that there was nothing he could do about the noise. My further inquiries led me to determine the name and contact information of the company responsible for this project which was Nautilus Solar, LLC. On July 26, I spoke to a representative at this firm and was informed that the trucking would continue to use Mail Road at least until the end of November. In Section 22-37 in the Town's Policy on Noise, it states that it shall be unlawful to operate any equipment in a residential area so as not to exceed 50 decibels between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. and not to exceed 55 decibels between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. From my research online, I have determined that the average noise level for heavy truck traffic is 80 to 90 decibels, far exceeding the levels cited in the town's policy. So in summary, I ask, will the town enforce its own policy on noise? And Did you I'd say like it was for equipment, Mary? Equipment or motor vehicles? It, it's got Wait, trucks. It's trucks got, in there too? I could I can even read it. I, oh, we got a lot of people yeah, I guess I don't have it with me. But um, it's it's a lot of different you know, machinery, trucks. trucks. Heavy trucks. Heavy trucks. Yeah, I don't have it with me, yeah. but I want it. So I'd like this to be matter to be put on the agenda for the next meeting. because uh, we've been um, tortured for months now with this and it's going to continue she said her her statement to me Holly of the solar um, Nautilus Solar was that her estimated uh, what I really wanted to know is when is this going to end you know can we handle it you know if it's going to end next week maybe I can handle it but um, she said November and end of November and hopefully the the trucks will be hopefully ending and they hope to finish it approximately early December. So All right, we gotta get on to the next one, man. Okay. So, uh, the next one is Paul Pisano again. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I concur with everything that she says. I live at sixty six Whispery <coughs> Pine Way. <coughs> and uh, I wake up uh, it's before seven o'clock that they start and the trucks are very, very heavy. But I'm more concerned about the fact that Mail Road is not built to handle that type of traffic and those, those, those trucks with that weight. <coughs> and I can see that road deteriorating. Now, I don't want to be, as a taxpayer in this town, become liable for a activity that is taking place that is not actually allowed. And uh, I... I I agree that we should have a hearing on this and find out whether or not this is going to be enforced. Because that ordinance is there and it should be enforced. Okay, number, number two. 
number three is Beth Brown. Hi, um, I'm Beth Brown. I reside at 60 Whispering Pine Way in Deerbrook. I back my fellow neighbors 100% on their concerns. Speaking to Holly from Norto Sola, she stated that this project will last until, she told me, December to January. We are hoping to resolve this problem with maybe a no through truck or weight limit sign. The Shotner Farm Project is our next traffic concern. I have sent two letters and attended a town meeting concerning this problem. I have been to the town hall many times inquiring the status of Mail Road being either commercial or residential. No one could give me a direct answer. All my research implies residential. We were told when buying our house it was a country road. When driving down Mail Road, it definitely does not resemble 95 with four lanes, yet 18 wheelers and large dump trucks are permitted. Besides endangering people, it has affected our peace and comfort of our homes. We cannot open our windows due to the noise, <coughs> the vibrations, and the exhaust smells. Our beautiful retirement home has definitely been compromise. Um, I do have the articles for the ordinance, which I won't read because they're long. Um, and I do ask that anybody on the town council that has a conflict of interest <coughs> in this matter um, refrain from voting, hopefully later on on this deal. Thank you. Okay, number four is Asa Davis. So obviously I disagree with Olivia's version of events from last month. I look forward to seeing the video. I'd like to understand what she considers false. The IRS says thanks. July 30th was National Whistleblower Day that helped collect over $7 billion in fines and taxes from non-compliant payers. That doesn't include cases 23-0794 to 0797 against Ellison cohorts, presumably still in process. Seven billion may not seem like much when our country goes a trillion dollars into further debt, less than 90 days each time, but every little bit helps, right? Think global, act local. On that topic, this council ignored the report on how to recover the DEM remediation costs, so you left taxpayers on the hook for that, well into six figures and still not closed. This one isn't as much, but now you've got the chance to do the right thing in a different area. A few months back, Olivia said the council couldn't have it both ways when it came to the building permit fees. Well, surprise, the inspectors have been having it both ways all along ever since 2002. That's the year the ordinance was passed on building permit fees, which made building inspector DeFrancesco responsible for calculating the permit fee multiplier, which goes down when total town construction goes up. He's responsible for doing this updates annually. APRA response shows it never happened. By his own witness admissions, he's never done it. As a result, the town has collected more than 700 k in illegal fees, and thanks to Exeter's unusual arrangement of paying the inspectors a percentage of the cut, about 160 k in the illegal collections went into Ron DeFrancesco's pocket. This is just the <coughs> last six years, which is the statute of limitations for ethics filings. This goes back much further and likely totals more. A few months back, you were talking about solar permit fees, and I said you should put it in escrow because you will probably have to give it back. And this is why. Just like planning board fees, it's now the subject of legal action. I have five permits affected. There are likely hundreds more. The town schedule doesn't comply with the state statute schedule, which has been mandated compliance since 2017. Planning board meetings, building permits, impact fees, the same principle applies. If it's more than the cost, it's an illegal tax. This problem's been getting worse and worse. The multiplier was 0.0068 in 2002, should now be in the 0.008 range based on last year's construction values. It's eight times higher than it should be, which also means the inspectors are getting eight times more than they should be based on the same town ordinance. Coming back to whistleblowers, there's sections in the ethics code that makes retaliation illegal. I found that while researching today's filing. Olivia is currently under investigation 2024-7. I wonder if that will come into play when you talk about APRA, since that's how all of the Ellis violations came about uh, into light, which were signed under penalty of perjury. This town improperly and illegally collected well into the six figures on building permits. That money came from people, builders and residents of this town. 
Just like the illegal it's planning board fee yes, was charged, you need to give it back. Stop making plans. Give, give them a copy of the record. The next one, it looks That's like question. Sharon McQueen. Oh, no, I had nothing oh, okay. to come. I'm sorry. I uh, signed the wrong paper. I saw the grab the first one. Wendy Fanner Aubin. Gary. Oh. <laughs> Gary. Okay, Gary. 
Uh, tell us, yeah, give the uh, council an update, and every, anyone else who might use your series. Gary, Gary. Mm -hmm. last name is H O E F L I N G. You're welcome. So uh, there has been an ongoing problem that started some months back. Um, well, let me go back first. I was brought here a year ago to help make an improvement in Charlie's Rubbish. Um, I live in New Haven, Connecticut. I went back and forth every day, so I'm dedicated to what I do. Um, the place I came from has a beautiful recycling facility. I helped put that together and enforce it in the customers and towns that we, we were in. I came here to do the same thing, and I did that. It was a shambles when I got here. I changed it, and we were doing very, very well until two very unfortunate things happened. We had a driver who was driving on Wood River Drive after a massive rainstorm and drove a $78,000 truck through four feet of water. I don't know if you know what, that ha what happens when that occurs, but the engine, the transmission, everything is destroyed. The next week, we were training a driver to fill in for the driver that I fired because of that, and he hit a tree um, about two miles from there. So the two trucks we had dedicated, they're smaller trucks to go up and down the driveways here in town, were gone. To this day, I still do not have those trucks back. And the reason that I don't is because parts, anybody who's in the business, parts are hard to get, especially truck parts. Um, we're also governed by DOT laws of hours of, of service. Not a lot of people know that. So we just can't take people that have already worked eight or 10 hours picking up your trash and have them go and spend eight or 10 hours picking up your recycling. So I had to make a decision. And that decision was, let me make sure we're getting the materials off the street until we could do something different. I'm here to report, we're very close to that. In fact, tomorrow I'm picking up a check to take to the, we call it the water truck, to be able to get it and get it back into service. Once that happens, we will go back to the way we were prior to these two unfortunate instances from happening. Um, recycling means a lot to us. I have a really good team, um, but again, some things out of our control. Uh, those individuals no longer work for us, and I expect within a, a week, and at very least two weeks, that this should all be going back to the way it's supposed to be. I thank you for coming to speak, only because, uh, well, I'm not the only one that had a question, and so it's good. And I know we've spoken to our DPW director who indicates that it really is important for Exeter to have that recycling handled properly. Um, so thank you. Did you have any questions about this? Are you okay? No, actually, I did speak with, um, it might have even been you. It was me. And I called that I have video of the operation going on. I said, if we can't have that there, and you did indicate that you are trying to handle it, get your arms wrapped around it. Uh, it's unfortunate, but um, hopefully it does get corrected because it's, it's, it's not a good practice what's going on. And that's not what Exeter wants to be re of represented. Of course, and I agree, I agree 100%. Okay. It's not being done intentionally. Right. That's the most important thing for you folks to know. Yes? I'm kind of missing a point here. What is the issue? Is it like garbage left around that's not getting picked no, up? No, no, no. It's, it's, we are having in most parts of Exeter to mix trash and recycling. That's the issue. We're not leaving anything anywhere behind. It's just that we're mixing when we don't want to be doing it. You folks don't want us to be doing it. And it looks like we're coming to the end of that unfortunate incident from continuing. And how many houses do you service in? Uh, Mr. Sands, I've got to keep this meeting rolling. I think it's important to answer the question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any questions from the council? Okay. No, but I, I thank you. Why? I mean, wait a minute. We heard, we heard all kinds of things going on, but I have nothing to do with the meeting. This has something to do with the meeting. I, like that. I, I think we should be able to listen to the gentleman and, answer, and have, his, have our questions answered. Mr. Mr. Sampson, he's up here to address the council. Mr. Ellis requested him here. The public comment section's over. If it was a public hearing, I'd have you speak. I can't let everybody just raise their hand and start talking in a meeting. We'll be here for days. So. But you let us raise our hands before to ask a question. That was during the public hearing. No, that was before public hearing. Dan, I, I'm just going to help you out just a minute. 
Do you know roughly you how many customers Simple. you have in Exeter? That was the question. There you go. So I don't you know, know an exact roughly. number, but I can always get that number. I can right. get it tomorrow. Roughly. Oh, it's an honest answer. Um, about 800 to 1,000. Oh, okay. Right. We have the lion's share of, of the town. I, I was going to say, I, it's mainly that the transfer station could do that open, but that's a lot of people. It is. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number nine, do business. Solicitors, license application, Trinity Solar LLC, 2211 Allenwood Road, Wall, New Jersey. Mitchell Berman, applicant, 3 Johnson Court, West Warwick, Rhode Island. Is this individual here? No, and they haven't. Um, fulfilled all the requirements anyway. So. Do you leave this on the agenda or get rid of it? The I think second we'll one? Just, people just let it go and is, see if they come through. Is this the company that's already soliciting? They're not. I no. talked to the guy and that was, they said they hadn't been soliciting here yet. Okay. They were working in other cities and towns. Mm -hmm. After that comment from the last meeting, I did speak to him and he said, no, we're not next to yet. So there's another company that's soliciting. So okay. So. I'd say we just wait to see if they come over again. Okay. Okay. Now, item D, Department of Emergency Management request for approval and the understanding between Towns of Exeter and West Greenwich regarding multi jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. That was a request of Dory Boardman to put that off till next month? Yep. Okay. So we can that one. Uh, C, Town of Exeter. Code of Ordinance, proposed amendments, Article 14, Building and Building Regulations, Article 2, Buildings, Division 2, Permit Fees, Section 14-51, Schedule of Fees. So, it um, appears there needs to be some revisions to this ordinance. Um, so I gave it to you, um, Bob, the Francisco needs to be consulted okay. for the changes that need to be made. I guess I, I'll call it. So, you have I'll, I'll call it. Yeah. 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 No, I can't yeah, just no. try to clarify. Yeah. Yeah, we, I want to, we go, we go those. We, we, can I see that one real quick? Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. It's the the uh, an existing ordinance that okay. needs needs updating. That's in my file here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be done. I'm going to hold it. So. All right. Item D. Department of Public Works awarding a bid. Trade in two 2012 F550 dump trucks with standards for new units. Wow. Yes, good evening. Um, <clears throat> as you might have seen, my recommendation was to go with the flood board, uh, flood Ford uh, bid. Um, I did also recommend upgrading to the stainless steel dump bodies that were recommended, and I also recommend uh, aluminum uh, wind deflectors and the top systems for the spreader and floodlights on the back. I wrote the bids. There's a lot of items that I, I forgot. It's, it's a very detailed thing. I miss the floodlights. They need them. Yeah. Um, but you'll notice that they offered $40,000 in trade-ins for our units. The next closest bid offered us $5,000 per unit. So in the offset <coughs> from one place's <coughs> trade-in value to the other, the $16,000 for the stainless steel bodies versus the steel in my opinion, is already covered in there, and I could show you stainless steel spreaders in my yard and the very rotted dump trucks that used to hold them. So the stainless steel spreaders are fine, and there's a reason why they use this for that. These ones you do with the stainless bodies. Yeah. Um, so that's my recommendation, is to go with the, the full um, stainless steel aluminum wind deflectors and the, and the floodlights for these two units, and also accept that $40,000 from Flood Ford for the trade-ins for the two vehicles. Okay. Sure. I'll make a motion 
to award the bid of two trade in two 2012 F550 dump trucks with standards from for new units from Flood Ford, uh, also with the addition of uh, stainless steel bodies and floodlights and deflectors for top system. Did I get it all? Yes, sir. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah, Dan, you have to, Dan, as your supervisor, yeah. you support this, your liaison, rather, to support this function. Stainless bodies? Absolutely. Well, okay, well, just for the record. Um, good. Like I said, when I was in there in the winter time after dealing with one of my trucks, and then I went into his shop, I felt better. <laughs> his the worst. So, yeah. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next up, item F, Department of Public Works, at request to use ARPA funds to purchase uh, wood you brush chip. You skipped one. one. What's that? E. You one. Oh, I'm sorry. E. 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 Department of Public Works requests to ride West Greenwich 2024 bid for liquid bituminous road paving. Yes, good evening again. Um, yeah, um, I'd like to just uh, be able to take advantage of the uh, bid that West Greenwich, did. as you see in the packet, they did their due diligence with the proper bidding. Um, we did use it before. Uh, we've got a fantastic number, and this is to do with the funds coming from the Rhode Island um, ready two to one make uh, two to one grant program that we are receiving right now, and it will be going from the end of this season into the next seasons, and it will be part of my. I'm using it to help <coughs> build my bid um, for my capital program for the next season here. To just get those numbers locked in. Thank you. They'll have these locked in for next spring, too? Yes. It says it right there on the, the contract. Okay. I'll make a motion to allow the Exeter Public Works to ride on the West Greenwich 2024 bid for liquid by two minutes for road payment. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I, I'd just like to just ask uh, to make sure that this is. This is totally legal with the bid process? Yes. Do that? Okay. Okay. They're on the state bid list, correct? Yeah. I'm what sorry, yes. What was the company? Uh, T. Myozzi. Okay. Yep. And we used them last last uh, um, summer yeah. to do one of our roads that we did. Fantastic company to work with. Mike, that's a new change to the orders that we did in the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah. It's allowed uh, to piggyback with other communities <coughs> or with a uh, state contract as long as they're uh, on the list and, and they are isn't that correct uh, i'm sorry i didn't hear that jim the the, the bids were all done through the correct process absolutely and the, all, all the documents are there in my packet okay all in favor aye, aye. aye. okay now i am ref. uh department of public works request to use article funds to purchase one a wooden brush chipper Two, mini excavator with attachments. Uh, three, solar powered LED lighted crosswalk signs. You're up again, Rob. Yes, um, this is in um, just in case that um, the proper money wasn't uh, obligated by the time it timed out. Um, I figured let me put together some items that we could bring to the town. Um, that we could be using, it'd be helpful. Um, one of them is a light for a crosswalk at Wawaloom School. Um, it's been, been brought to my attention. This is a very dangerous spot. So if, if any, the most important one to me is those two lights, to be honest with you, but they all are, um, could be, um, assist me with keeping uh, up with the town's work. <clears throat> Sorry. So. Okay. Any other questions from the council? I mean, do we have the money to approve, approve all three of them? And you have the money to approve all three of them? So um, there is money in the ARPA funds. Um, mainly, 
So the ARPA funds have to be obligated by the end of this year. And because of the lead time between council meetings, going out for bid, getting the bid approvals, and awarding it, um, basically, uh, Roth is being proactive in having these bids ready. Um, so the bids are there. And uh, so that as time goes on, if um, funds are not obligated to other projects or other departments, this is ready to go. I, that was the uh, that was the intent. That's right. Thank you for helping me out with that. I couldn't find the words, but she helped me out there. Yeah, just like the the issue <coughs> the excavator with the attachments, that one he's been doing some research creating one machine in which was not the green. Uh yeah, and since then I had no choice to put that out into the field. Uh just because I was running behind and I do have an operator that's making that thing really do some wonderful work. Now, what, what's terrible with that is I got one operator that's really good with it, and it's a massive machine, but it's doing a great job with the right, in the right hand, so I'd have to do some more training, get somebody else. You still up here, whether it's going to be, it depends on what you get for bids, too, correct? That's right. Okay. So you know, this, not only this, this should be a request to use ARPA funds to purchase to go out to bid. Well, you know? this is like like Maria said. It's got to go out to bid anyway. Well, absolutely, no, absolutely. Yeah. And these are all just like targets that you know, if somewhere around like. But the lights themselves, um, that that's a the cross one wasn't a big number. No, it wasn't. But that one to me, out of all these, is the one that I'd like to just get done because it needs to happen um, and I'm just trying to find what source to purchase them from I was just saying we could probably order that one right now it's only 5,000 5,000 well this is 37 five this is 3,750. Right, and that's that's what I have for a quote for two units that would be excellent. And I, I'd have to get some more written quotes, but those are the targets. That's basically what I feel is needed there. And of course, we'd have to do some upgrades with the, the paint on the road to really make that spot light up. So, and that's what my intention is. And I could take it out of the DPW's budget, but I figured this would be a good spot to maybe probably use some of those funds. Okay. Yeah, so the in the can we were just finishing up all the construction work the last year. And because of the issue of working close to the wetlands, 
on this project, and that's where a lot of the money will probably go to addressing that issue. But we just felt that we weren't capable of doing it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, we already had a wild, uh, a wetlands ecologist Understood. who right. already went out and de right. definitely said we don't, he said we won't need permitting from DEM or anything right. for that. But that's him saying that that's not a high consultant that will come back and but, okay. work with yes. DEM. But that's yeah. one of the first things, too, that would be paid for by the grant, is if we do need to have anything done, they would also take care of that. And it's just not we would love to have a, a pathway back there. It's just that the board is not, we're not subject matter experts in this. We have to bring building, planning, um, and from the ground, it has to be involved. And then who else knows? Who else? I don't know, planning board. Um, but it's the wetlands is the issue for us that we're just not confident enough. Some of them may not have wasn't it? Um, we were thinking with just the, you know, it could, the way the trails exist out there already, it's just natural <coughs> and it's all pretty well maintained by itself, you know, just with like rainfall clears all the crap out. <laughs> and then, just some and everything. It's actually, yeah, taken out actually a lot of what is the invasive plants, yeah. the, um, the bottom olive, I think they call it, and that's one to get rid of that for sure. And uh, and then it'll just sweep around where we're confident. Actually, I'm looking at the map right here that shows where the wetlands are, mm -hmm. and um, we're staying clear of that. This is this the one you were asking about earlier? Right yes, there? it was. Thank you. That's it. Um, <coughs> I got some other one too. And if you just want to see it, oh, anybody okay. else? Yeah. yeah. I got it all marked up with uh, all of the Thank important you. points there. Sharon, can I just say again that Sharon has spoken to me and I said, let's put it on the agenda because Sharon is Exodus alternate representative to the Wood Park Attack Wild and Scenic River and Watershed. <laughs> Sharon says, we just call ourselves Wild and Scenic. And I said, well, that's okay. Uh, but they're looking for the grant and, and they might, if, it's, if they get it, then. Those issues, I guess, would have to be addressed with that. Right, and I think the idea is that the, the library board has a fiscal agent because we do have a 501c3, mm -hmm. and we're not comfortable as a board taking on responsibility for a, a, a project like this, with the wetlands. <coughs> the wetlands. Well, we can go out there and, and help get clarity. <coughs> but there seems to be a bigger project down there. <coughs> so if the planner would come to work, they might view it. And he thought it was okay. And it was great. You know, we're just taking a volunteer, but nothing about the ecologist or the wetlands guy you have, but he's not going to testify on behalf of the town when the end comes back and, and there's issues. Oh, well, there's well, well, no. It's not going to be an issue of the not knowing what we're doing. I mean, the a part of this whole process, too. So the library board so. not, it doesn't have technical expertise to manage this, the financial maybe, but the, the grant itself we need professional help. So now that would be starting with the plan. So we need to ask oh, Bill. Are you talking about the town plan now? All right. Okay. I can go to the town plan and that's not a problem for me. Shan, did you say there was a uh, uh, window of opportunity for this or not? Or yes, well, like the grant, the request for proposals will be the October 1st. And we have until the end of December to get a proposal in. Okay. So you've got so, a couple of months to be able to. Right. But what we know, have to have first is approval by the town. Otherwise, it, they won't right. accept the proposal. I know Sharon had told me that Robin looked at some blocks and things. That yes, that was that, the last that wasn't, time. And it, here he is. Right. But, yeah. so, but if there's other issues with the board, then that means the board doesn't know it doesn't have the expertise. No, I understand. Well, that's, I, I hear you. Right. <coughs> okay. Well, so it board, board, that board. did you know about this? Yeah. The, uh, the trails? The <coughs> Temple Trail? I haven't made it back there because I'm doing pavement preservation projects, which is my priority right now. But I do intend on checking it out and 
But yeah, you raised the issue about the boulders being yep. a hazard. Um, it is. We're designed it well clear of the boulders because those boulders are right next to the. Accident. Eventually, they'll be crushed and be in. put into town roads and stuff. Yeah. It's material yeah. sitting there until we can get some a crusher yeah. lined up. Right. Okay. So. All right. But because they're so loosely stacked, is my fear kids climbing on it and one could shift and pinch and it and be a hell of a spot to get a yeah. rest, you know, well, help that in there. This right now, that that concern should exist right now because anybody can walk into that area. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, so I should talk with the town planner. I believe if the town council approves it, then I'll bring it back to the board and be the fiscal agent for it. Oh, okay, with the support of the town. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the project. We can second the motion. With the planner's involvement. So, with the planner consulted. Okay. To consult it. Moving it forward. All right, great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Shannon. Ah, you're still in the process. 2019. That, uh, again, but Dan, I placed this on the agenda because of the discussion that uh, has surfaced, particularly at the last meeting uh, of the council and uh, you will recall that I uh, presented uh, to the council uh, a letter, a statement really from the um, assessor regarding the need to address Stony Lane and its abandoned section because she did an inquiry from, a, from an attorney. Uh, so that's what I did. And I discovered that the very next day Mr. Davis went to the assessor to question the, the genesis of that, that inquiry, which I made it clear to you that it was because of, of an attorney visiting her. So I had placed that on the agenda because uh, Carrie and I, the assessor, had talked about that. And I said, well, I know that we abandoned, not abandoned, I'm sorry, we accepted Kayla Ritchie, what, a couple of years ago, entered with all the work Dan that you did and, and the highway supervisor. So it seemed like that also was an issue that ought to be addressed so that people that live on Kayla Ritchie know that they live on an approved road. And by the way, I don't know the I don't know the developer, I don't know anybody that lives there. I did place a call to the Ethics Commission today spoke to an investigator and said, I have a couple of items on the agenda tonight, so I wouldn't be surprised if there won't be another ethics complaint filed against me. So I, I'm just telling you that I understand, even though I've been advised not to bring up anything with regard to uh, anything that Mr. Davis has said or done, but I, I think given, uh, given, given the fact that there was an ethics complaint filed a lengthy one filed against Mr. Millar related to the um, Stony Lane abandonment. I just think you ought I think you ought to know what happened. I mean this was part this is part of now an ongoing by the way, I suggested to the ethics investigator today that with that complaint, um, if there's any question I can answer, any help I can give because I know I, I mentioned uh, a pepper, pepper throughout. So um, I, just, I just would like to give you the information about the public hearing that was held because, I mean, this is, this is important. Uh, so if you could just take copies. This is in 2019. So I've got some copies there for you. And and I, I'm sorry, again, I, I don't mean to pursue it other than the fact that it was brought up, uh, a major ethics complaint filed. And um, yes, I guess I'm a little sensitive since, since uh, my name appears in, in concert with the filing. So I um, just wanted you to uh, address, if I could address this. First, first last month on July 1st, 
Uh, this was a public comment. Asa Davis, Beachwoodville Trail, spoke in regards to the abandonment of Stony Lane. Mr. Davis states Mr. Millar gained land from the closure of the road. Mr. Millar is trying to sell his development rights. Mr. Davis claims by the gain of his, this land, his sale will be higher. And Mr. Millar uh, has, is in conflict. Now, I, I don't know anything about any plan that Mr. Millar has to do with his property. I don't think any of you do. I know I don't. And it had nothing to do with the genesis of my placing that item on the agenda. And I think you ought to know that because August number four is a communication you've all received. And I, I removed it only because I want to speak to it. And you would probably write some of it. <clears throat> and, and here, this, this again is a message to the council. I did make an allegation. This is dated July 5th. I did make an allegation, which I later retracted with the Ethics Commission, hereby retract with the council, that Mr. Millar gained property from the abandonment. This was based on the assumption that the gate placement was proper and legal. However, based <coughs> on that his statement, I went out to measure, it was not. And then it goes on to speak to match deck placing the gate near Millar's property line, 300 feet short of the road end. This triggered a revision, expansion of the ethics complaint. Mr. Millar stated, it goes on and on, since this improper placement blocks access and use of a public road, and I was not aware of this at the time I wrote it, since corrected the ethics filing, but this raises significant higher ethics issues. It appears no one else is in town is aware of it either, except perhaps Mr. Ellis, Mr. Millar, and Mr. Matchtech. I don't know anything about the gate placement. I never went, I never saw it. I didn't have anything to do with where it was placed. But he suggests to you that I do something about it. And I would like you to know, and I hope you believe me, I knew nothing about any of the process. Now, that's, that's July 5th. That's dated July 5th. But, but if in the same communication, you have a copy of a submission to the Ethics Commission. You know what the date is? July 5th. So on that very same day that we received this communication, here, here is a communication. This is all the ethics complaint, by the way, all of this. You've seen it. Probably like me, you would pass it by. But this is about what was on last month's agenda. It's about an abandoned road. It's about a map that isn't accurate. And here's the summary of this complaint. With the assistance and complicity of fellow ethics violators, Stephen Matchcheck, with a citation, and Calvin Ellis, with another citation, you may remember that that citation has to do with the Washington County Regional Planning Council, of which I was a director, but I was always appointed here as a representative. Never used the word director, but you know I, I didn't tune into that. My mistake, I should have known. Uh, failure to recuse himself, oh, Scott Millar's repeated and intentionally willful participation and failure to recuse himself properly for conflict of interest and potential personal gain in regards <coughs> to the Stony Lane abandonment helped him realize an estimated personal property gain in the range of uh, $63,000 to $126,000 based on current assessed value. So it either helps him because it was the way the gate was placed and, and he acquired more property from the abandonment of the road, which by the way didn't happen, or it didn't because the same day he told you that was an error. Now, now perhaps I'm, I'm not representing this correctly. I think you can gather this a lack of, total lack of mutual respect uh, between myself and Mr. Davis, but I want you to see the summary. You have copies of this. 
but I just wanted to point it out to you for the record, if I could. Uh, now, now you see, please, in front of you, the uh, public I just can't, hearing. I just have to interrupt. I don't know why he has to laugh at all this stuff. Well, it's because all, he, it's, it's funny to you. This is funny to no, you, don't huh? Don't worry. This is a joke? No, it doesn't. Don't. No, my, okay. Mike, don't. He can't. What he, who he is, what it is, it's okay. Now, this public hearing of June 3rd, 2019, you, you see on the very first paragraph, minutes of the council's regular meeting of the prior month, May 6th. <clears throat> and here, here are the minutes of the meeting. New, new business, stony laying issues, fires, flooding, dumping, partying, consideration and possible action, closure, abandonment. Mr. Andrews, public safety liaison, received a call from Chief Scott Tippett, who expressed public safety, safety concerns regarding Stony Lane. Notice there's no reference to Scott Millard. It's public safety issues. You probably remember this, Dan. You were sitting, you were sitting together. Mr. Andrews met with Chief Gabbett, Public Works Director Max Jack, a Nature Conservancy rep, and a butter, Scott Millar, and Council Assistant Ken Finley. Um, kids often party in the woods, sometimes 50, 60, or 70 at a time, setting fires and leaving them to smolder. The fire department has responded several times to fires and once for possession of drug overdose. Section in question is not easily accessed, especially by fire apparatus. Tow trucks cannot access the area. And a butter recently used his tractor to help pull someone out. That butter, I, I'm quite sure it's not Mr. Millar, but it is a serious situation, a problem waiting to happen. Best option is to abandon the road, close it off to protect, to protect public safety. Now I read that to you folks, would you realize, because this gentleman wasn't there and I wanted to speak to Olivia about this as well. Notice there's no reference to gaining property here. The reason was because of the serious uh, issue. Uh, and, and Chief Gavitt, thank you. And I, I've been to that, if I may interrupt, I've been to that spot that you refer to. You know To it? tow someone out who called me at 9.30 at night to go down there and tow them out with my Jeep because of the water that was there in, in, in that area that you mentioned. Oh. So I, I know the area so you're you, talking about. you know what I'm speaking yeah. about. Well, it, it goes on here and here. The rep for the Nature Conservancy was present, indicated they are in agreement with the closure and so forth. Mentions Ken Finley here next. The motion made, <laughs> and this is what I find interesting, because remember, I was reported to the Ethics comm Commission here as being complicit. Well, you must perhaps think I was, and I want you to know not. And I'll tell you why. Motion made by Mr. Andrews to schedule a public hearing regarding a possible closure and abandonment, abandonment of Stony Lane on the Council's regular meeting agenda of June 3rd, which, is, which are the minutes of that hearing that I just gave you. <coughs> Agenda seconded by Mr. Kahn. You probably don't even know Mr. Kahn. Is that Mr. Ellis who seconded the motion to pro no. You don't don't say Michael Kahn. it's not me. Michael Kahn was it Mike Kahn. Was a, was he was here before. Yeah. Yes, he sat here. Voted unanimously in the affirm affirmative. Now that brings us to the minutes of meeting that I that I just gave you. And and that's a public <coughs> hearing that was held on June third, twenty nineteen. And, and it refers back to the, the minutes of this meeting that I just cited. And there are questions here. You've got it. I gave, I've given you a copy. Um, what, what I find interesting, though, is that there is discussion of GPS, and I, and I know this is why I think it's probably important that some action be taken. I don't know. I don't use GPS to travel through Exeter. I know where I'm going. But I suspect there are people who don't. I've heard stories of people that are led down some dead end dirt road with, through by GPS that hasn't been updated, which was one of the reasons that I think Kerry, if not the main reason, brought it to my attention. 
in any case, motion made by Mr. Andrews, and you've got the minutes here, motion made by Mr. Andrews to close the public hearing, seconded by Mr. Kahn. Motion made by Mr. Andrews to order the abandonment of that portion of Stony Lane. And, uh, and, and to declare to create cease to be useful. It was seconded by Mr. De Gregorio. I, I don't find where I'm complicit in this process. I will tell you this. I was chair or president of the town council at the time. So I guess I sat here. I didn't make the motions. I did vote yes on the motion to abandon. So you see you've got statements on July 5th that the, that the issue about Scott Millar, and by the way, we, um, <coughs> we tonight, tonight, uh, you approve minutes of last month's meeting. Here's the public comment. Asa Davis uh, said that Mr. Millar gained land. Remember, I guess I'm repeating myself uh, through the closure, but he's now recognized that he didn't. But it said, and once it's said, it's out there. So I'm glad there are some other folks here tonight that listen to me and understand uh, that I wasn't complicit in any of it. Thank well, that was for, really, really net luck. It's fantastic. No, thank you for listening. And, and the reason I, I, I make this issue, and then I, the reason I bring this to your attention is because we addressed it last month because it's a huge ethics uh, complaint that's been filed against Scott Millar, who served, and this is public, so excuse me when you think I'm betraying some secret. It's public record. He's given years and years of his service. We, we did not, uh, we did not uh, reappoint him last month. I think it was just last month. Um, but now he is the uh, recipient, if you will, a victim, or whatever you want to call it, of the uh, target of this ethics complaint. That's why I called the inspector today and said, please pass the word on. If I can be of any help, I'm happy to be of some help. I don't know what help I can be, other than I didn't have anything to do with the closing. I never attended the meetings at the site. Uh, and. That's what happened. So I wanted you to know, because you have August communication number four. And like most of them, you perhaps just placed it aside and piled it up with all the rest. But I took a few oh, minutes. Oh, sure, once. Well, I, sir, I just took a few minutes. And when I saw that, it seemed like I wanted to address it, which is why I put it on the agenda for tonight. Thank you for your patience, Council. Okay. Item J. Um, Access to public sorry. records. Act. I'm sorry. Request process. Okay. Yeah, I'm one. almost done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done. I'll tell you what happened. I came in here on or about July 17th. I often stop in. I check often with the clerk. I pick up what's waiting for me in our mailbox. I found uh, a clerk in, in some state of, oh, I don't know, I'll call it tizzy. It sounds like an old country word. And I said, Lynn, what? Well, Lynn, what's up? She said, I just, I just crafted and sent out uh, another uh, request to, um, uh, to Asa Davis. And I said, well, like what? Another APRA request. And I said, well, well, like what? You know, what, what's happening? What do you mean? She said, well, there are a lot of them. And I said, well, many of them. She said, well, last month, which was June, just 23 in the month of June, after a request. 23 after a request in one month? In one month. That's what she said. From maybe, one person? From Mr. Davis. Maybe, maybe Lynn misspoke. I don't think so. I think she was keeping accurate records. I'm not sorry. I don't mean to put you on the spot, Lynn. And I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, but you were uncomfortable the day I came in here. I don't know if you remember that. So we spoke about it, and I said, well, what is this accumul an accumulation? And she said, well, yeah, I've actually had to tally them up. And, and in the last five years, since 2019, there have been 193 
at the request made of, through the town clerk for public records by Mr. Davis. Now clearly he's interested uh, in a lot of what's been going on here. In fact, last Monday, uh, you may recall, but you were not here, Dan, uh, he indicated we need a town administrator so there can be an adult in the room. So clearly, we're really not a bat at that. Maybe Diane, he's never really said anything about you, Diane, so I guess you're the grown up there. Um, in any case, I said, but, but, but Lynn, what kind of an answer did you give? I said, I wonder if I can even look at it. And, and, I, and I said, well, gee, is it, is it public record? Are these public records? And she said, I think so, but well, let me make an APRA request. So I did. And I, I just, I don't know that you've seen it. I don't think you have. Why would you have? But I started reading. I started reading, and it says, please, to Asa, thank you. Thank you for your communication. I said, you really thank him? Because I feel a little frustrated. But anyway, as the designated rep, here's, this has come to my attention. And pursuant to the effort excerpt, apparently taken, your communication purports to be blah, blah, blah. Please be advised that the APRA is the public's right to access to, to public records and set this to and to facilitate public <coughs> records to access public records. Other body, and I, then I have to ask you for the record, have you been told in any way, in any case, that APRA requests are not public? Can the public have access to those? Have you been told that we can? Because I, I did pose a question, and, and, and an attorney uh, reached out to the AG's office today to ask that question. Uh, but, but I think I can have access to what you gave me. But, but I filled out an APRA request just in case. So I, I filled out the APRA request. And so, so the answer is what intrigued me most. Um, it does not, the APRA does not require a public body to re reorganize, consolidate, or compile data that is not maintained in the form requested, nor does it require a public body to respond to inquiries, answer questions, or conduct research upon request. It is the requester's responsibility to frame requests with sufficient particularity to enable the searching agency to determine precisely what records are being requested. Now, I mean, I read this when Lynn handed it to me. It sounds extremely professional, but I'm not surprised, because Lynn, you may know, her prior career was as a manager to a law office in Providence, so it, it did not surprise me that she'd written this. I cannot, accordingly, interpret or respond to excerpts from the Ethics Commission or any other public body. Such an exercise would require me to make a series of conclusions and assumptions that go beyond the scope of a recognizable APRA request. However, with respect to discernible requests, I respond as follows. Now, so most of her responses are C response number one, C response number one. But response number one is fascinating, because here's what it says. Please see introdu inter introductory comments. This request does not specify, quantify, or identify the agendas, minutes, or records that you see. I cannot identify records which you may believe might support the ethics board's comment that the planning, board's de the planning board determined that the rural residential compound ordinance should be revised and updated by way of amendment. Now, I'm not follow, I've not followed this planning board issue, uh, but in any case, obviously, Mr. Davis is. When I asked you to specify, your response was, talk to Bill. Now, I don't understand when I see the, the form in which we, we, we request an APRA. Uh, here's the APRA request. Where do you write on here, talk to Bill? talk to a planner to get the information that I'm looking for. I didn't think it was appropriate. So I'm reading it, and, and, and it goes on to say, any and all planning board agendas, minute, 
records referenced are available for your inspection. We all know this. And then request number two says refer to my answer here. Number, request number three, refer, and in response and so forth, I'm not authorized, and it goes on. And I said, gee, gee, Lynn, what, what, what are you thinking? And she said, well, I'm thinking I've got several more of these, and they're even longer than the request that I'm answering here. So to finalize this concept, this conversation, I came here Thursday, had a couple of questions for Lynn, but I was told that Lynn was working from home, which is, of course, permissible when one needs to. She's working at home on minutes and APRA requests. So, in my opinion, this, this is a bit excessive. Apparently, it will continue because this seems to be a practice that's, I guess it's even getting, when I, when Lynn showed me a multiple page request, and maybe those could be, Maybe those could be brought down a bit. Maybe they could be, be, be reduced to something that's more manageable so that Lynn can move on with other work that she needs to do. And I don't think I have anything else to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay. I don't know whether anybody, you know, if anybody, of course, Mr. Davis might have something to say. I don't know whether anybody else does or not, but. Uh, no public comment. No, that's not on the agenda. No, no I know it's not public comment, but sometimes when, when people have questions, we, we answer them. Item K, American Baptist Convention of Rhode Island Property Sale and Anarchist Camp and Conference Center. Oh, all right. I'm okay. sorry. I think this is it. Uh, the reason I placed this on the agenda, or maybe it's not. Let's just say that. Lynn, stop laughing. <laughs> anyway, uh, I placed this on the agenda because I had a call from Sharon. Wait, did Sharon leave? No, no, no Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Uh, and I, I had seen this piece in the paper at Corey, the American Baptist. By the way, there's a correction. It's not Lynn's fault. It's American Baptist Churches of Rhode Island. Lynn, my fault. Because when I gave you the item, you said, what does that stand for? And I said, oh, convention, because that's another story. Uh, and we've all seen, subsequently, the newspaper article and, and other bits of information that have come to our attention that uh, at Quarry is, it wants to divest itself of some pretty beautiful property at Camp Canonicus. And you know about it. You know where it is. I, I, don't shake your head. I don't. I have a 50 acre piece of land between me and them. Uh, okay, so you, you like I it? Speak. Right. Well, no. you, well, you can speak, but I don't want to see it used for, excuse me, utility scale solar or other uses when I think it probably could represent a very nice preserve for public use. And so I don't know how the rest of the council feels or if you're aware of it. It's a beautiful piece of property, though I haven't visited it. I know people who have. Have you? Yes, actually. Have you? I go there all the time. You do? Yes. Um, Would you like to preserve it? Uh, or of no? course. We, uh, oh, we, uh, good. In fact, I've talked to the executive minister to oh. make some suggestions. Uh, one of them was maybe land development, working with DEM, uh, development rights. Oh, okay. uh, she has okay. been working with DEM. Something. I thought you meant develop that kind of thing. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think that's what you meant. But no, to sell or develop. Right. So I, 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 I maintain good. the property and they could continue on unless they are. Um, um, she suggested that she has been working with them, but it probably is not going to happen. She really cannot afford to keep it. Okay, yeah, we do have a meeting because I learned about it a while ago because we are Liberty Church is a yeah. member of the yeah. you know. Uh, and and so we are having a meeting on August twenty second. Just let me say that I put it on the agenda because I have a thought. And my thought is that this council, I would like to see this council take a position that we that we which is to direct our clerk to write to that quarry and ask that they take every any step, whatever steps possible, to preserve the land so that it is is available for as a preserve for public use, 
something other than other than other kinds of development. And I, I think that at Corey, as you said, you've talked with them. There may be nothing that they can do. On the other hand, there may be there may be entities out there that that maybe somebody's interested. They also have a big problem with repairing the dam. Which is well, going to cost yeah, they fortune. Well, they already fixed the thing. They yeah. finished that. Yeah, that, was, they, that cost they a lot of money. So. <laughs> they kind of went. I'd like to say for the record that my family on my mother's side helped to construct Chestnut Hill Baptist Church. I say this because I was a member for very many years. I am afraid that somehow that can relate back to the fact that if I'm making a motion here tonight, it might make its way to the Ethics Commission that I have some connection to the Baptist Church. I know I'm exaggerating, but we've got somebody around who does. So my motion is going to be that we direct the clerk to write to Ab Corey on behalf of the council and urge them to consider any possible uh, opportunities to preserve the property in its current state. I probably will have to abstain from that because because you because you have a connection. So she's got a connection, but I don't. Do we have a second? Second. Good. Sharon, Sharon, you and I spoke. I, yes. I mean, she's the one who asked me to place it on the agenda, but do you think I've covered what I should have said? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> well, one thing I will the say water. about the well, watershed. The water. Sorry. Oh, she's sorry. See, she she's part. The reason she called is because she's got that um, wild and scenic <laughs> thing going on with the wood wood pork attack, and there are rivers there. I mean, I think she had mentioned there could be connections there. I think there may be a lot of opportunities. The mm -hmm. There may be a lot of opportunities. Anyway. Does that motion make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I hope, I don't think there's anything I'm saying we I'll be kidding. I don't think. Oh, shh. Wait a minute. Okay, next up is town website issues. Oh, it's not. Okay, now. Well, it's on me because I heard that there's been issues with it. The, um, the company that designed the website did an update a couple months ago. And ever since they did, they're not pushing out the notices. They were pushing them out if you signed up with your email, ad email address before the update. So every time I would post or somebody else would post a meeting, that would get post pushed out to everybody's email that had signed up. We did the update, and that fell off the bandwagon. And James, our IT director, has been trying to get them to fix that. A couple weeks ago, I told him, cut our losses, get a new website. Um, but he's still trying to get them to work on it. They may be, may be migrating us over. Because we were Municode, they got bought out by Civic Plus. So they may be migrating us over to Civic Plus. That was the last uh, end of last week. He was meeting with them to discuss that possibility. But that's where it's broken because they did an update. And several people in the last couple of weeks have spoken to me about the fact that they used to get minutes and uh, not minutes, I'm sorry, no, agendas. Agendas and and okay. agendas that you don't get. Well that's that's what we're speaking to here. And and I guess it always used to happen. I don't know because I ain't got a paper copy because I I work here. I don't work here, but you know what I mean. I'm here. But other people that want to know, people said we don't know what's going on. I said, well, it gets posted when confirmed that it's posted right at the agendas are posted right after they're posted with the Secretary of State's office. But I've also spoken to James only because you told me that, and I said, James, please help us. And he said he is, and he thinks by September, maybe he'll know more. Even though they're not um, getting pushed out to the emails, they are on the website. Right, right. They are on Secretary of State. Posted so that's, right, which is what I told people, but they, they were used to <laughs> being notified. And, and maybe that was a service that was really well beyond, you know, above and beyond what you 
could have done or should have done, well, but no, the new did. website had the option, so we used oh. it. Oh. The old website we couldn't push out. Oh, but now the new one could, and now you can. Exactly. Does that make sense to everybody? She tried, but she can't. Oh, I hope the next one. No, the next one isn't right. The next thank you a multi-purpose community facilities committee. And we had a meeting, it was in June, where we wanted to go through with this thing. And at that time I voted against it because we didn't have all the information. And the more information we're getting, this is turning into it's gonna end up cost right now it's turning into a state mandate where we're gonna be shelling out money. Until you get this grant, if you get this grant, which with their, with their, I'm not even going to call them requests. I'm going to call them demands at this point. Mandates. Yeah, yeah. Well, what they're doing now, and what caught my eye was about two and a half, three weeks ago, I was in here looking for that one attachment because Lynn asked me, "What does this mean?" It, uh, and when I looked at it, I started laughing. It, uh, my page here. When you go on this page here, CPF Community Learning Center Municipal Grant Update, and this is, we signed this paper, we won the money, and here we go. Next step, October 31st, 2024, you need a capital project scope, schedule work, budget, project timeline due to PRO, early submissions are encouraged, and I'm like, Right now, the way the construction industry is, the private sector couldn't do that, what they're requesting. That was one issue, but what really got my eye is, is item O, where they want us to change a resolution from the financial town meeting in July, that was done in June 2023, and they want it worded to where the voters put it down as the staff cow bear with it specifically says the purchase was for a new town hall. They want that resolution changed. And as you go through it, that's why I had all this printed up. I, You're looking I, at all this asking. pricing and, and talking to her with the ARPA money. You're going to be throwing away a lot of money. And you'll never meet this. This one you will never, ever meet. It uh, will be hard for us to meet this for December. And, uh, so what I want to do is put out a motion to revisit this because the way this whole program works, you read through all their notes of that, backed by the U.S. Treasury. That was it. So what I want to do is put out a motion to place the question of whether to rescind the vote of June 17, 2024, which approved the sub award agreement by and between the state of Rhode Island, acting by and through its pandemic recovery office in the town of Exeter at the next meeting because we have to notify these people what we're going to do. So, so that's my first motion. And guess what, Dan? Is there a second? I will second it. Okay. And I will second it and want discussion quickly. Yep. I talked to a lot of people this morning. So, and and they're, 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 yeah, it would be great to go for it. But also, it's we, an issue. We don't have the personnel. We don't I, have the I know. funding. And me and Ken were talking, that, that email number two, now it's down to only seven cities and towns. And Ken, he works in state government. He thinks, the one comment he had in one of his discussions is, they're trying to take all this money and give it, put it somewhere oh. else. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was my first motion. We had a second on that? <laughs> he seconded it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, just another, another issue. That woman that these late uh, Maria Lynn met with, uh, you know, not for nothing, but for the record of this group that we are could possibly and likely turning down that grant, I would think it, I'd love to see the lady come here and ask the questions here at the council table that they've asked that have gotten answers that or, or what you say that come on we can't do it we'd like to do it as mike said when he made the motion and i don't know he's going to vote on this but uh, but when he made the motion how can you turn it away well 
I've spoken to Maria, others that I've spoken to Lynn before. Uh, you don't want to turn it away, but if it's impossible to to make, uh, the, the make it right, then maybe we it, don't need to go almost, down that road. Well, like when you read it, it's backed by U.S. Treasury. They're watching yeah. them, but it's almost like it's, it's, I don't know if it was Providence on that list of seven. <laughs> yeah. They probably had something already sitting in, in the works, waiting for funding to where they could pop it right out. So, and they also have. I, I understand. So that was my first motion. So we're in a second. I need to vote on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now the second one, this one here, I'll make a motion to move that the clerk notify the relevant state authorities of this action and invite them to attend or communicate their position in advance thereof. <laughs> and I move to instruct all relevant town officers and departments not to request or accept any state funds pending the town council's further decision on the motion to rescind. Second. We don't want your money in between. <laughs> well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't get it, not from the grant. You never know how the state of Rhode Island oh, works. Calvin, yeah. if I asked Maria if she'd gotten any money, no, she won't and accept any. The way they do it is they electronically transfer. Uh -huh. It would be direct deposited if. Well, Maria, <laughs> stop it. <You> know? <laughs> so we haven't got. Have so it. that's a motion. Yeah, but we I haven't got any yet. Sorry, but no, what, what you got to get tomorrow? Yeah. No, we have to request it. We have to actually yeah. request. We have to actually request it. Request it in increments or yeah, lump sum. No, I, I, I'm trying to make it. So we'll not request. He's worried that they might. And I always on the same page, but I understand. See when, when this first come up because I've done government contracts in the past. This is three, three. I can remember one job I did with USDA and John Spike. I'd like to be in my shoes. Every time Congress meets, the rules change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was my motion. We had a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That one was easy. Now, you find my agenda again. So, compensation for administration of the pandemic recovery grant. This was now, Olivia. Excuse me? This was Olivia. Okay, but now you've done work, she's done work. Oh, this is Have you guys been paid for what you've done so far? Or reimbursed so, for? So this, uh, I had spoken to Olivia. Um, I don't think this is relevant right now. I think we okay. can take it off the agenda. Okay, so. Remove it? Remove it. Okay, so item O, community facility grant, request by Office of Pandemic Recovery. We, we can do a later that one too. Um, well, we're not that has to do with changing the I think they're going to be asking me tomorrow because I told them I put them off till to, you know, yeah. now because they wanted an answer. We met with them on June 9th. They wanted me to answer them by the end of the week. And I said, well, sorry, we're not, not changing the resolution. Not happening until the council reviews it on August 5th. They're not taking action. Let's answer. Yeah, we're doing anything. Do you need a formal vote on that, Jim? If you wish, I mean, okay. otherwise it's just noted that there was no action. No action taken. Just put no action taken. Okay. Okay. Good. Number ten. Unfinished business. Town treasurer request for clarification regarding compensation to board canvases members for training. So I have. Um, I'm compiling other cities and towns what they do with their board of canvassers, how they structure and how they compensate them but I don't have everybody's, so I'd like to push this off to next month, if that's possible. Before we do that, I, I have your uh, your letter from July 1st that you said in it, would it be better to pay them from the non-union clerical hourly rate of 1695? Is that what you're referring to this year? Yes. Is that something that might make sense to, to the council? Um, I think at that time, um, I was asked to see what other cities and towns are doing, and I'm compiling a spreadsheet. So. It might work, but it might work. Right. It might okay. work, but maybe it council Wait to see what comes back. Yeah. Maybe council would be curious to see how other cities and towns handle their board of canvassers and see if we're, you know, kind of par up above, below. Okay. If you want to wait, I mean that's up to you. Well, I think it's up to council. Wanna wait? Yeah. wait. Yeah. Okay. Right. 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 From yeah. Boston, we're Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Two. One, two, three. 
incident at 5 West Shore Road? Um, this is my next highest priority. This is Auburn that we just did here. You did yeah, I, did, I, okay. I chased her out to let her know that pavement preservation process, one of them, the most biggest one, should end tomorrow, but the rain might push it out. That is the next, I am there within the next week. Okay. Uh, damage to town property, Mail Road. You want to address that, Jim, or you want to? Sure. I, as council directed, I, after speaking with Rob, wrote a letter um, to the uh, construction company that did the damage, also the property owners, also the developer, uh, advising that they needed to respond to Rob and to fix the damaged road. Um, we told them to do that immediately. Asked Rob last week. Nothing, no response. I asked them today, no response. Nothing. So I suggest we wait until uh, 30 days is up in uh, uh, next week. Uh, I don't know what the council wants me to do, whether you want me to file suit, whether you want me to just follow up with a, you know, with a fall communication to see whether we actually plan on addressing this. But we wrote the letter as directed. There was no response yet. Uh, we were 24 days out from the day my letter went out. And it went out certified. Okay. Yeah. I have a question on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've seen that area. Yeah. I went by a bunch of times. I'm always right now. Stupid question. Is this damage enough worth all this time? I've seen, I, I, in my layman opinion, it didn't look that bad. Right. And it, it, it's a hundred. They they move fifty ton machinery on that road. So what you're not seeing is the fragmented parts that I believe happen underneath the surface on top of the, the, the top surface that is removed and you can see down layers. Okay. So I, I believe in that 100 foot, we're not looking for more or less, I'm looking for that targeted spot to one of our best roads, one of our newest roads in this town. And believe me, I, I got residents were furious about this situation because they know how beautiful that road is. And that road can handle full-size trucks absolutely there's no doubt about it but when you track machines I'm talking hard forestry track machines twisting yep. they put a, a, a half-inch piece of plywood on there and it just busted right through it, it so, but, but but that's what you see I believe it's fragmented underneath Good. that's gonna pop up in years to come and you're gonna be like oh you got potholes on that road and it shouldn't happen is understood I just had to ask I'm just saying that I believe it's worse than what you can see okay just the amount of weight and the tonnage that made you. But now I'm curious, please, Dan, if I can ask these these trucks that are traversing Mill Road, are they not <coughs> that's not going to that work site? They're going to it's exactly that? going to that work site. It's, it's not the trucks that hurt the road. They were taking track giants, machines, the forestry equipment. Well, not the excavators, the okay. forestry equipment well, that has browsers that eye on it. That's what tore the road up. It wasn't the trucks, the okay. heavy equipment. Right. Yeah. But the trucks that people have spoken to us about are going to that site. They are. Yeah, right. And, no, and I, no, it's not just there. You see them going right through. It's a cut right. through. All right. Okay. I'm trying to reach out to the owner of the property because I know the husband's. Okay. He lives in back and forth from Florida. I mean, I, I put out the response why well, I want to cut out and remove at least. That's what I told you. That 
at least side, at least 50, 60 foot in either direction. It's like they just bought an asphalt plant. I think they That's what I mean. I, I, it, it shouldn't take much for them to just cut it out, remove it, yeah. and, and just put it back in there, and then we will pave it. It, it should last the, yeah, the yeah. same as the rest of the roadway. I think it's ruined under there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're on a cow. We'll leave it on. Uh, status RI 250 Commission, Exeter Historic Preservation Commission. <coughs> Katrina left. She had to go. Nothing new, Sheila? No, just uh, okay. on, on, ongoing planning. Okay. Okay. F, uh, status, town building uses and improvement, improvement plans. 675 Ten Rod Road, awarding the bid roof replacement. I believe it's the one that, the one that wants recommended because he's seen the spaces in the decking. It's the only way he'd be able to do the it. Only one. It's from looking. That's, what I think it, I That's think right. So too, because he's the one that fitted with replacing the the, the wood. The right. wood. This, what do they call it though? The sheeting. Yeah, plywood sheeting. Yeah. Which one was was that RTP? It is. Yeah. Yeah, the only one is when I was going through them, Rob. Yeah. Well, go ahead and give us your recommendation. I'll, I'll wait for that. All right. Uh, just give me one second. I just got to find it. <laughs> you want this one? I don't need it. Um, I got mine. I have it right here, Mike. Thank there you. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the, I was going to, my recommendation is RTP roofing. Uh, so there's a couple of reasons, uh, actually. Uh, the, the price is almost, it's $300 less than its nearest competitor. Um, they're going to install a new layer, a half-inch CDX plywood, 30 sheets. It's none of the other ones mentioned. <coughs> they're doing all the, what do they call the slope, oh. the slope angles. They're just putting a half-inch over it. I believe that's the one they're going to replace some of the siding, too. Is that they're it? Actually, yeah. that's my next point. They're talking, they're, they're addressing the they whole package. <laughs> they're using a 50-year shingle. The next nearest one is doing a 50 50 year coring tin, which I that well, how do you say the corn, which I know is a phenomenal product. We we put that on the library, but it's a 50 year shingle. It's a 50 year shingle, and the only way the warranty works on a 50 year shingle is they do the decking, and that's why he's doing it. So I, I don't know. Plus fixing the siding, I called two uh, uh, two out of the three references I spoke to. One of them was like uh, he's doing an 80 unit roof apartment system like that they're, they're, they're like the guy's great his he's uh anything he says very few mistakes were made but he came and fixed it right away and then um this other realty guy uh he's he's used them for several several years and has, they, he says they're, they're excellent company to work with so that's all i got that's why i arrived at that bill looked into it real deep his carpentry back down ground for me so and that was RTP. Yes. Okay. Okay. If we are to award it to them, like anything we do, like they all of them gave copies of an insurance certificate that showed their, their liability is expired as of 9/19/2024. The reputable, I'm sure, will be renewed. So I'll make a motion to award RTP roofing the the bid for. I just had a piece of paper backwards. Forty-five three hundred. <laughs> I got, my notes. I got my notes on the back. I'm sitting there trying to get the front figure. RTP roofing for the sum of $45,300. Uh, stipulation when we enter into a contract, we need up-to-date insurance certificates, namely the town of Exeter, as additional insurance. Session. Any discussions? Yeah, you have to be up to 50 years. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I said, yeah. No, we have to no. tell Okay, I'll just but I have a question. So when they start doing this, when do you think it's going to take a week or so? I um, I I did not talk to the contractor. But I've normally, read, what does it take to do a roof? Well, it's complex. It really could be a week. Did you say that? I'm just wondering how this is going to be for a certain month to everybody. You want to take a quick look? Maybe we find it. Come to you. Sorry. Bill thinks he saw it in there. I didn't. 
Take it as it comes. Yeah. I can speak yeah. for the roof we're building <coughs> that's a day. Yeah. But you've got all these dips and valleys and now the plywood I was, I was wondering replacement. The disturbance to, you know, on daily work, everyday work, being on the phone and stuff. Mm -hmm. How's that gonna work out for us? Something we can ask them before they start. Right. But I think any contractor you're gonna have the same question, right? So yeah. Yeah. we I don't have that answer I mean, for some you. Some people can work and some people can't. I guess we'll have to it's going to be noisy, that's for sure. We'll have to talk about that. People can get things done. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, take a vote. No, we didn't take a vote. Vote. Okay. All. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go. Next is a request for <coughs> uh, proposals based with water mitigation. We've got no bids. Right. We still have water. <laughs> and, you know, can we do it? One bidder that said he thought his company was going to bid for it. He might have missed the mark date. So I don't know if we want to rebid and see. Yeah, I'm hoping we 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 bid, and after a second, do you think that is there anything you think Stop. maybe Rob? You think Rob? You think anything would it be could be tweaked in the second two? Well, I, in the specifications? Yeah, in the specs, just maybe. It's pretty basic. In, right? I don't know. You, oh, you wrote it? it was Let's check this then. <laughs> Can we check this? You check this if you wrote it. It was just because somebody responded, not because of the IT. Uh, no, so no. Right? somebody that came so, earlier. We've got a quote. All right. So, so you think it's, it's, it's in good order? It's in good order. Oh, yeah. It's in good order. Let's just ignore my question. <laughs> So let's take a vote. What's that? Take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next is 742 Ted Rod Road. <coughs> and what's it been a week and a half since he's been out of there? Yeah, so on, uh, <laughs> on July 25th, Bob uh, Moy uh, texted me and said he's vacated the building and that. He was providing with the assets code to get in the building. I met James and Andy there after. <coughs> and so James was able to talk to the uh, that does the security codes for Bob. Um, and he switched them over within an hour over there. I couldn't do it. It's pretty technical. <coughs> they were doing so the cameras, the alarms, the door locks. Um, do a little bit of cleaning, but other than that, we uh, worked down the plumbing and fixed a couple of toilets. I guess those toilets can't be sitting for that long. I feel like this one will walk. So he fixed those, and it's just um, ready to make the next steps now. Yeah. I was talking to Ken the other day. Probably the next step is writing an RFP, ASAP for renovations, alterations, additions to the future town hall because that money runs out in December 2024. So get this in the pipeline. What was it take to do an RFP, Ken? I think we did it before with um, Mr. Azzarano's. Do we, do we have to vote on sending this RFP out or can we authorize Ken to send one? I think. I, I think we should. I, I, I'm just for discussion. Uh, Ken and I have talked about this as well. Uh, I, I would like to I will move uh, that we make Ken the, the uh, in charge of the prime master of the war, whatever you call it, clerk of the works or something, so he can move forward as quickly. No clerk, you know, project, project, project manager. Project manager is fine. Project, project, no, we've got a clerk here. Project, project manager. If, can we discuss that? We meet, we meet them. They are project managers. Yeah. What well, I'm saying, if he does an RFP, do we need to have a vote to send that RFP out? Well, I think we should authorize it to move this so forward as quickly as we can. To approve it, you know. I mean, the expenditures on it. Can you do it in two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> when, when were we going to do a special meeting, possibly? We were. That's what I was just having forwarded to you. If anybody has any comments, then just send it right out. No. Well, 
That's my motion. Wait, I'm in charge of moving okay. it forward. Okay. Okay. Move forward. Is there a second? I think I seconded it already. Oh. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then me and Ken were having another discussion with the minor things that being fixed up there. Commence fixing them. We're going to hold off on that roof truss because Bill was up in the attic and it had already been supported. If we're going to change a roof line, why do we want to spend seven or eight thousand dollars? That was, you said what they supported for two by sixes, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. It had already been done. Yeah. So before we go spend money on laminated beams and carpentry work, I mean, they might be changing that roof line. But there was the one minor, well, we can change the oil tank. Me and Ken can't find a leak, but they said there was a leak. So, oh, okay. yeah. And one must have had to do a job. Can get the top? If you get a chance to dig up top of that tank, I might have a riser that fits that. Okay. So we mowed the grass today for the first time. Good. Well, the way the one supplier I use would normally drop stuff off but if they have a partial load with the price of fuel and everything else. Now they charge one hundred seventy-five dollars. We had to. We'll check it out. Did you mention more than one thing needed a riser there, though? Uh, you could probably put it, it's, it's got two open, you put one on the inlet, one on the outlet. It, okay. it, the one lid was cracked in okay. the inspection. It, it's, only that, it's only down 16. You just want me to get it and fix it? Two risers to grade with some heavy concrete lids. That would be the jolly pre out of that stuff. Okay. So you just got to get the right diameter you have on there to put the size. Okay. So that, my other motion was for, for to use some of these ARPA funds to fix what needs fixed now. <coughs> That's a motion? That's a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anything else? Ken? Who's up? Two motions? Because if you want me to move forward with what needs to be done up there, yeah. I just can't come back to the council. Yeah. You only need once a month, and it's going to take how yeah. many months? Because he's going to be. So I still think Rob and I won't bring all the chairs. <laughs> if you get the RFP ready, we can post it. Yeah. And then maybe. Right, but there's all things that have to be done. Yeah. You know, so. Um, well, even if you want me to be the project manager, at least I can stop the discussion and find out find, uh, the space needs. I volunteer if you need a chair of the works. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the works. Then I'll be clerk of the works. So we have a second for using the offer money to fix what needs to be fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Thank you. All right. Aye. 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 Uh, I had one thing, one thing, one thing on the well, well, too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I got it. I'm well, well, no, he's got something. Go ahead. Well, well, I, I so well. My my motion was to put Ken because he's Ken. Yeah. Oh, we already voted on that. Yeah. Well, not really. Yeah. 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 The motion was the RFP. motion was for Ken to move forward with the RFP. Right. That's it. That's that. That's it. Okay. Just is that enough? No. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Ken. Project manager. No. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. So, so you're doing, are you doing the RFP or is it coming? Are we putting it on the agenda in September or are you no, we're we're doing putting it? Doing we're putting out in the paper <coughs> before September. So, so it is it done. Got it. But I have one thing on 742 if you're all done. So you put up there a sign, Future Town Hall, and we have had nothing but questions. When you move in, yeah. you know, when you move in, when you move in, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. We've before. had people go there to pay their taxes. Oh, We've had no. people go there to license their dogs. Oh, no. I put on the website, if you brought up the website lately, I put a, sign, I put a note that um, 742 is not, um, can I put, not, um, no, for not, not active. Uh, I totally we agreed on that. We have it. Yeah, and then no, we're, no. Have it. We're, no. we're not there yet, and uh, all town business should be done at 675 Tenrod Road until further notice. 
So what I wanted to ask you guys is if we could put a sign, coming soon, under construction. Oh, coming. How about under construction, we're, we're coming soon, 2023? We already have the banners <laughs> really? on the front going both ways. Yeah. I have to say, for further information, yeah, go to www.exitri.gov. The website is not up. You get sidetracked. It'll just be to tell people what's going on with them. But, small sign. But, but you know, an interesting little sideways. Yes. It's a beautiful sign, but if there's a little thing like on an angle that says coming soon. Wait, wait, we already have a plan. We have a plan for an angle thing to catch people when they're going 60 miles an hour by. But we have a little old lady came in the other day. She says, I went up to the new place to tell my taxes and there's nobody there. No, it's in the future. Sorry. Well, somebody's working, you're working on something. He's working on something. Coming soon, sign. Coming soon. That's for that we, Is that the word? Coming soon? Coming soon. Probably about that high to look at on the top or something. Well, or even if you do this, it's like really brings people attention. Put it right across the street. I'm also the right sign. Just right on the top. Well, good. In red letters, coming soon. But it's such a beautiful sign. But say coming soon. Well, functionality before fashion. Under construction. Under construction. Coming in 2028, 2030. 2025. I don't care. I know. I know. People I know. Don't know. I 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 know. Right, and that's what and the point of our banner is. That's the point of our banner was going to be to say call updates, go to the website. <laughs> that's that what we're doing. Huh? Unless you want to hang something up in here or fly up here. Mm -hmm. so I, was, I wanted coming soon under construction. Yeah, I like coming soon. Well, was a, there was a vote um, uh, several there months was. ago there was. about was. putting up um, visit www.exit.gov <laughs> and then we're going to post something. <laughs> Sorry for the inconvenience. I'll get something up there for a sign on it. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think uh, there's somebody driving by it. It's coming soon. It's just, it says that all. Yeah. It's coming yeah. so down here and say, when? Yeah, they will. No way. That's why I said, you know, we don't know what it's saying. Well, let's see. How about coming pretty soon? Sorry, <laughs> How about maybe coming? <laughs> <laughs> All right, communication. Uh, so communications, we had number four and number two, and I think we discussed them both. Yeah, we'll be right. Okay. I'm going to make a motion yeah, to two. take a five or eight minute break before we go into the executive session. Sure. <laughs> Second. Uh, All in favor? All right. We're going to have a Stop picking some of the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> This is my night. Don't hit the camera. Every time I spend. Wow, Yes, sir. Yeah,